Good evening and welcome to the Digital Bible Study Connect July 22nd edition. It's about the 749,000th edition of the Digital Bible Study Connect. Uh, we've been doing this a long time. I say we like I was there from the get-go. Jonathan and Eric have really developed a good work. It's benefited a whole lot of people. And that segues me into my next segment of our introduction. We would like you to subscribe to digitalbiblestudy.org for as little as $5 a month. You can go to digitalbiblestudy.locals.com for as little as $2 a month. And in fact, if it were any, if we could make it any cheaper over there, we could, we would. But you get some added benefits if you're a subscriber. Just today, we had a uh, Zoom class. I taught from Hebrews chapter 10. We had a wonderful class, if I do say so myself. And hopefully, we've got some good things lined up in the future for that Friday slot. And that's only to our supporters. So if you're supporting us monetarily, you get access to some things. Now, if you want to support us, but you don't have uh, the ability to do that monetarily, or you don't even you just don't want to do it monetarily, don't underestimate the support that would be given us if you like, subscribe, and share, and interact with our content. Be sure to go to the Facebook page and like and follow the Facebook page and turn on those notifications. Be sure and go to the YouTube channel and like the videos and subscribe and smash the notification bell and share. If you'll share from that YouTube page onto your Facebook page, that really helps out, uh, helps out our cause in the algorithm. And what Facebook and YouTube will do is they will show our content to people who have similar interest as you that's not even related to Christianity who otherwise wouldn't get this content. And that's priceless. So there's so many things that you can do to help. It blows my mind that five minutes after the top of the hour, there's already 50 people in this live stream. There's not a lot of people having that much success on social media with Bible content. Tonight, of course, Jonathan Jenkins and Eric Owens are kind of in the in the opposite ends of the earth. Uh, we'll, we'll say a special prayer for Jonathan at the end of this session. Uh, he and his wife, his wife is having a, a procedure, and that's all I'm going to say about that. I don't know much more about it. But she's having a procedure, so we'll keep her in her prayers. And, of course, Eric is, from my understanding, is off in Texas handling some stuff as far as the move is going. So we're so thankful that you're here, and we have a special treat for you tonight. Uh, we have Jeff Jenkins. So, uh, oh, and uh, don't, I did get ahead of myself. Don't forget, uh, if you have any prayer requests, I'm going to be monitoring the uh, chat, and uh, I'll, I'll try to write those down as I see them. And we'll have a we'll have a prayer at the end of this session. So, without further ado, welcome Brother Jeff Jenkins into our live stream. Brother Jeff, hello, Brother Tony. Good to see you tonight. Man, it's good to see you, brother. So, um, the last the, I, I watched a few introductions, and Jonathan at this point usually kicks it to Eric, and Eric says, "Well, Brother Jeff." We're happy to have you here. And for the folks that might not know you, tell us a little bit about yourself. Where are you from and what do you do? So fill us in a little bit, brother. Well, Tony, first of all, you don't sound like Jonathan or Eric. No, sir. No, sir. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad to be with you, Tony. Thank you for your work. And uh, my name is Jeff Jenkins, and I live uh, in the metropolitan area of Flower Mound, Texas. There and you go. People don't know where that is. It's close to Grapevine, Texas, or Louisville, Texas, or Dallas, Texas. And uh, I'm uh, kind of semi-retired, we would say, from preaching in a local congregation to preach for Louisville for 17 and a half years. But now I, I travel and preach and help preachers through the Jenkins Institute. And uh, Tony, I've preached more this year than I ever have any year in my life. So I'm some people uh, ask me how retirement is going. And I say, well, I, it's busier than I've ever been. So I'm very thankful for that. Yes, sir. Um, I, I consider myself a, a grammarian and I can be somewhat pedantic. And I look at a word like retire and that's almost like, like it's re, that means you've, you've done it again. And tire makes me think of being tired. So sometimes retire just means you're tired twice because you do more work once you're retired than you did when you're when, when you were working full time. Yes, sir. It sure, sure seems like it, but it's all good. I'm grateful for uh, every opportunity to study the word with someone. 
Absolutely. Well, the Lord needs you. And I know the Jenkins Institute is, is doing a mighty fine work and, and sure helping a lot of people. Well, we're very grateful uh, for the opportunities to help particularly preachers. We love preachers and want to help as many preachers as we can, but also elderships and churches as well. Amen. Well, brother, I'm not going to take too much more of your time. I will say that um, Sister Connie Barden asked, is Jonathan ill? No, ma'am. Uh, it's His wife is having a procedure, and that's all I know. I did ask, I said, is this something that's that's acute, or is this something that's part of with what she's been dealing with? And it's, from my understanding, it's part of what she's been dealing with. So, like I said, we will certainly include a special prayer for them. And, uh, yeah, that's all about all I've got. Well, Brother Jeff Jenkins, um, we're certainly interested in what you have to say tonight about the wisdom of God. And, uh, of course, being a fellow preacher, I've thought about the title, The Wisdom of God, and uh, I've, I've got it in my mind where I would go preach with that and from what text. And I, I certainly love hearing other preachers' perspectives on things. So without further ado, Brother Jeff, uh, won't you preach us the word? I'm going to I'm going to slide off here, and then this will be yours, and then I'll come back on after you're finished. Thank you very much, Brother Tony. God bless you. Oh, wrong button. All right. It's great to be with everyone tonight. Thank you so much for taking the time to study the Word with us. I don't know what passage Tony would use. I'm uh, looking forward to hearing which one he would, but I want to invite you to open your Bible to Ephesians chapter 3. Uh, we're going to look primarily at verses 9 through 11, but before we get there, we'll do a little introductory work. I believe the book of Ephesians can easily be divided into two parts. Uh, chapters 1 through 3 deal with the, the more um, doctrinal aspects of the book, and chapters 4 through 6 deal more with the practical aspects. And so sometimes I talk about position and practice. And so in Ephesians chapter 1, Paul mentions the phrase, in Christ, 15 different times. He talks about the fact that, that we are in Christ. He said, we're in the beloved. Uh, we are in the Son of God over and over again, 15 different times. You'll see that phrase, in Christ, that Paul mentions, and it shows the position of the child of God. And then in chapter 2, he goes to great lengths explaining the application, how uh, compared to where we used to be and now where we are now. Uh, for instance, he says in chapter 2, verse 11, remember that formerly you Gentiles in the flesh were called uncircumcision by the so-called circumcision, which is performed in the flesh. Remember that you were at that time separate from Christ, excluded from the commonwealth of Israel, strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. That's the way you used to be before you came into Christ. Uh, that's, that's a beautiful description of what it's like not to be a child of God. Look at verse 13. But now in Christ, you who formerly were far off are brought near by the blood of Christ. And so Paul in chapter 2, on two or three different occasions, and also in chapter 4, he's going to talk about the fact that formerly you were this way, but now you're in Christ. And so chapters 1 through 3 deals with our position. Chapter 4 through 6 deals with our practice. It deals with the practical aspect of daily living. It talks about uh, being united, chapter 4. It talks about our relationships with our husband and wife, chapter 5, with our children at the end of chapter 5 and chapter 6, with our uh, employers and employees, chapter 6. Chapter 6, beginning in verse 10 through verse 16, he deals uh, with our uh, daily walk with God, our spiritual battle that we're involved in. He says, put on the whole armor of God. And then he concludes the chapter by saying, I want you to love Jesus with an incorruptible love. That's the very last verse of the book of Ephesians. Right, <coughs> pardon me, right in the middle of the book, uh, as my mother would say, smack dab, in the middle of the book of Ephesians, Paul gives to us what we would call the plan of God. And in this uh, chapter, he's going to talk about what he calls the mystery of God. And then he's going to talk about the wisdom of God. So let's just spend a few moments dealing with chapter 3. Uh, for this reason, I, Paul, the prisoner of Christ Jesus, for the sake of you Gentiles, if indeed you have heard of the stewardship of God's grace, which was given to me for you, that by revelation there was made known to me the mystery, as I wrote before in brief. So the first thing Paul says is that, that I uh, 
the stewardship of God's grace was given uh, to me uh, for you. Every gospel preacher needs to understand that God's grace has given us the opportunity to proclaim the word. But it's not just for us, but it is for others. And so we proclaim the gospel of Christ for others because God's grace has allowed us to be preachers of the gospel. And then Paul says, by revelation, this uh, mystery uh, was made known to me. And then look at verse 4. By referring to this, when you read, you can understand my insight into the mystery of Christ. Now, Paul is going to tell us that previously this mystery was not known. Look with me at verse 5, which in other generations was not made known to the sons of men, but now it has been revealed in his holy apostles and prophets in the Spirit. So whatever this mystery is, Paul calls it the mystery of God, and he says that in previous generations it was not known. What we're going to learn is that uh, it is in all probability there were some prophets of old who wrote about the mystery of God, but they didn't have a full understanding even of what they were writing about as they wrote it. We'll see that in this chapter in Ephesians 3, and then we'll look at one other uh, passage. So he says, it was not made known to the sons of men, but now it has been made known. And how is it made known? Through the holy apostles and the prophets. Those are the ones who preached the gospel in the first century. The Holy Spirit imparted the word of God to them, and they proclaimed the gospel. Paul would say, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God to salvation to all who believe, to the Jew first and also to the Gentiles. So he says, when, I, when, I, uh, when you read this, you will understand the mystery. So obviously these people did not understand the mystery up to this time. Others did not understand the mystery in the past. But look at verse 6. He begins by saying, to be specific. He is going to tell us now what the mystery is all about. So notice with me verse 6, that the Gentiles are fellow heirs and fellow members of the body and fellow partakers of the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. Now look at what he had said previously in chapter 2 verse 12, that previously the Gentiles were excluded from the commonwealth of Israel. They were strangers to the covenants of promise. They, they were uh, without Christ, they had no hope, and they were without God in the world. But now the mystery is that the Gentiles are fellow heirs. They are children of God. They are fellow members of the body. They are partakers of the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. What a, what a beautiful passage this is to tell us that the mystery is that all people will be saved. Now, I believe that, as we said, uh, prophets of old wrote this, but I'm convinced that there were times that they didn't understand everything that they were writing. For instance, in uh, Joel chapter 2, Joel wrote about the fact that God's Spirit would be poured out on all flesh. Peter said that this is what was spoken of that in Acts chapter 2 on the day of Pentecost. Daniel wrote about it in Daniel chapter 2. Isaiah wrote about it in Isaiah chapter 2. Jeremiah wrote, wrote about it in Jeremiah chapter 31. He writes beginning somewhere around verse 30 or 31 that um, there would come a day that no one would have to say to his neighbor, no Jehovah, and we believe the neighbor there would be the Gentile. There will come a day that no one will have to say to the neighbor anymore, no Jehovah. For now, he says, they will all know me from the least to the greatest. So the prophets of old wrote about the mystery, but they didn't understand everything that they wrote, as we'll see. So Paul says, when you read what I'm writing, when you read this, you're going to understand the mystery. And so that would be true of us today. Suppose you're not a Christian or suppose you've never really studied the book of Ephesians and you come about on this passage about the mystery and you read Paul writing about the mystery uh, that was made known to him. You don't know what the mystery is yet. You don't understand the mystery. Uh, but as you read further, he says, to be specific, I'm going to tell you what it is. And when you read this, you're going to understand that the Gentiles are fellow heirs and fellow members of the body and fellow partakers of the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. Now that, my friends, is good news. That's the euangelion. That is the gospel. You say, well, why is that good news? Well, here's why it's good news. It's good news because probably every person who is watching this broadcast tonight or every person who will watch this broadcast is a Gentile. We are 
probably all Gentiles. Now, there might be some people of Jewish heritage who are watching this, but the vast majority of people who will be watching this are Gentiles. And what this means is that before the gospel came, we did not have the benefits of the gospel. Uh, we were separate from Christ. We were aliens from the commonwealth of Israel. We were strangers from the covenant of promise. We were without hope and without God in the world. That's the way we, we were until Christ died on the cross and until the church was established. But now we're no longer in that condition. Now we are fellow heirs and fellow members of the body. We are fellow partakers of the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. What good news that is. And so if you are a Christian tonight, you are a, bene, uh, you are a beneficiary of this wonderful mystery of Christ. But let's keep on reading. Verse 7 says, Of which I was made a minister, according to the gift of God's grace, which was given to me according to the working of his power. A couple of things about this. Every gospel preacher needs to understand that we are ministers of this good news according to the gift of God's grace, which was given to us. Look, we didn't come up with the gospel. We didn't scheme it. Uh, we don't have enough uh, ingenuity. We don't have enough creativity to come up with a, a way to save mankind. But God did, and he gives us the gift of grace to be able to proclaim that. Sometimes preachers get a little bit discouraged. Sometimes preachers want to hang, uh, hang it up, throw in the towel, so to speak. Uh, sometimes we start thinking that we need to, to do preach something different or we need to do something different. But the fact is that we didn't come up with this in the first place. And the opportunity to proclaim the gospel is a gift of God's grace. And every time I preach the gospel, I think how blessed we are. and What a, a wonderful God we serve that he gives us, those of us who are what Paul would call earthen vessels, uh, clay pots, the opportunity to proclaim the gospel. And it's not, look, it's not according to our power, but it is according to the working of his power. And when we proclaim the gospel, the gospel will fall on the hearts of honest and sincere men. And God said that his word will not return into him void. But Paul believed that the opportunity to proclaim the gospel was a gift of God's grace. And then he says in verse eight, to me, the very least of all the saints, this grace was given. And again, I think every gospel preacher ought to look at his uh, heart that way. I'm the least of all the saints. I'm, I'm nothing. We're nothing special. We haven't done anything to deserve the right to be the proclaimers of the gospel of Christ. It is a gift of God's grace. Um, we are the least of all the saints. And too, there are too many Christians who are arrogant about the preaching of the word of God. There are too many preachers who are arrogant and proud and boastful about look at me, look at what I've done, and they want to make it all about themselves. But we cannot do that. We must not do that. We are those who have been given the gift of God's grace, and we ought to look at ourselves as the least of all the saints. And Paul said, this grace was given to preach the gen to the Gentiles. Now look at this, what Paul calls in the New American Standard Bible, the unfathomable riches of Christ. That's what we are able to preach, the unfathomable. Some translations say the unsearchable riches of Christ, the unfathomable riches of Christ. We can't comprehend the beauty and the wealth and the wisdom and the riches of the gospel. This is the unfathomable riches of Christ. And we have been given the grace of the opportunity by the grace of God to proclaim these unfathomable riches of Christ. And then look at verse nine, to bring to light what is the administration of the mystery, which for ages has been hidden in God who created all things. So that's what we do. We bring to light the mystery of God. We proclaim the gospel of Christ. We've been given the gift of God's grace to be able to do that. And we proclaim the unfathomable riches of Christ. My friends, there is nothing that is more beautiful and more honorable and more, uh, more uh, precious than the word of God. And we've been given the opportunity to proclaim that gospel to a lost and dying world. Well, let's continue reading verse uh, uh, 10. And this is kind of the, the main thought of the lesson tonight, beginning in verse 10 and verse 11. So that the manifold wisdom of God, listen to that phrase. Paul said that these things have been hidden in God who created all things. Uh, we proclaim the unfathomable riches of Christ. And we do this 
so that the manifold wisdom of God, that word manifold is a very unusual word in the Greek language. It only occurs in um, this and perhaps one other place, a similar word that's found only uh, once or twice in the entire New Testament. Uh, it means, um, some of the older translations use the word variegated. It means many splendored or many colored. It is the, the manifold wisdom of God. It is, imagine um, a woman has made or someone has made a beautiful quill and they put many different colors in it. And you thought, think about the beauty of the colors of that quilt. Or uh, you think about the fact that uh, on uh, some hillside where the flowers bloom in the springtime and they dot the hillside and you see many different colors. And so there's the many colored, the many faceted, the many sided wisdom of God. That's what we proclaim. And notice what he says here. The manifold wisdom of God might be made known Notice his words, through the church, or some translations say, by the church. That's what we do. That's what the church is all about. That is our mission. The church's mission is to proclaim the gospel of Christ, to proclaim the unfathomable riches of Christ, to proclaim the, the many faceted, many colored, many splendored, the manifold wisdom of God. And we proclaim that wisdom to the world. Uh, for, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Go therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Jesus said to his disciples on the Mount of Olives in Acts chapter 1, begin here in Jerusalem and go to Judea and to Samaria and to the ends of the earth, proclaiming this message of salvation. We proclaim the message of God, the message of salvation. The church makes the message of God known to the world. That is our mission. That is what we are about. That's what we are to do. The primary mission of the church, look, the primary mission of the church is not benevolence. Although we must be a benevolent family of God's people, we must be benevolent, but that's not the primary mission of the church. The primary mission of the church is not edification. Even though we must edify and build up and strengthen one another, the Bible is clear about that. But my friends, the primary mission of the church is to proclaim the unfathomable riches of Christ to a lost and dying world. Now, you know that. You know that we proclaim God's wisdom to the world. But I want you to notice something different about Ephesians 3.10. In this passage, Paul does not say that we proclaim the, um, the wisdom of God to the, to the world. He doesn't say we proclaim the wisdom of God to the church. But I want you to notice the phrase in verse 10. He says, we make known through the church to the rulers and the authorities in the heavenly places. Well, what does that mean? Well, we know we make known the wisdom of God through the church to the world, to people who do not know Christ, to people who are, who are living in sin, to people who are separate from Christ, who are alien from the commonwealth of Israel, who are without hope. We proclaim the, the hope of God's glory. We proclaim the unfathomable riches. But this is what that verse says. This verse says we proclaim the wisdom of God to the principalities and the powers in the heavenly places. Well, what does that mean? I believe he's talking here about the angels in heaven. That phrase, principalities and powers, sometimes will say authorities. Uh, he's talking about the host of heaven. Um, sometimes that phrase, principalities and powers, is used to describe even the demons of hell. But this is talking about the, the angels in heaven. I believe, and we'll see another passage that points that out. The angels in heaven. You remember in um, Luke chapter 15, when Jesus is talking to, uh, telling a, par a parable of, of the, the lost sheep and the lost coin and the lost boy. And Jesus says, they rejoiced when they found the coin, the woman did. The, the man rejoiced when he found the sheep. And Jesus said that just as they rejoice, there is rejoicing among the angels in heaven. I believe that means every time somebody becomes a child of God, there's a, a, the angels in heaven are rejoicing. Every time somebody comes home who has been the prodigal, like the one in Luke 15, the angels in heaven are rejoicing. Every time a soul is won to Christ or is brought back to Christ, the angels are rejoicing in heaven. We proclaim the, the wisdom of God through the church to the principalities and powers in the heavenly places. Now, before we look at verse 11, I want to ask you to turn to one more passage in 1 Peter chapter 1. 
first Peter chapter one, uh, Peter, by the way, is this is a very similar passage to Ephesians three. It's almost a parallel passage, I believe. He writes in verse seven, the proof of your faith being more precious than gold, which is perishable, even though tested by fire, may be found in result to praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ, more precious than gold. Ephesians chapter three, the unfathomable riches of Christ. And though you've not seen him, you love him. And though you do not see him now, you believe in him, but greatly rejoice with joy, inexpressible and full of glory. Now look at verse nine, obtaining as the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. He's talking about salvation here. The same thing that Paul was talking about in Ephesians three, it's the same mystery that Paul was writing about. And he said, it is the fact that now every man, every woman, every boy, every girl can come to know Christ. The gospel is now preached to all of the Gentiles. The gospel is now preached to the whole world. Uh, and it involves the outcome of our souls. Now look at verse 10. As to this salvation, the prophets who prophesied of the grace that would come to you make careful searches and inquiries. That's the same thing that Paul wrote about in Ephesians 3 when he said the mystery was not made known in times past, but now it is made known. And so the prophets wrote about it. They wrote things that I'm not even sure they completely understood. It was revealed to them that they were not serving themselves, but you. And so they were, they were told that they were writing not just for uh, what they were, the times in which they were living, but for those of us even who are living today. They announced to you through those who preach the gospel to you by the Holy Spirit sent from heaven. That's the same thing that Paul said in Ephesians chapter 3. And then look at the end of verse 12. Things into which angels long to look. Another translation says, the things in which angels desire to look into. What does that mean? That means that when it comes to our salvation, the angels want to know more about it. They're looking into it. I believe if you go back to Ephesians 3 and listen to verse 10 again, so that the manifold wisdom of God might be made known through the church to the principalities and powers in the heavenly places. Here's what I believe that means as we begin to wrap all of this up. Every time a soul is one to Christ, every time a person becomes a child of God, each time someone is baptized into Christ for the forgiveness of sins, the angels in heaven look down. Are you ready for this? And they say, isn't our God wise? Isn't our God wise? Paul said, that the salvation process proclaims the wisdom of God to the principalities and powers in the heavenly places. Every time a person who was a Christian who fell away comes back to God, every time a prodigal comes home, the angels look down and they say, isn't God wise? The plan of God is the wisdom of God. This mystery that had not been revealed in the past that now has been made known that we can understand when we read. It's the wisdom of God. It's the unfathomable, unsearchable riches of Christ. That's what we proclaim. Listen, my friends, it's important for us to understand this. Every time the church does what the church should do, the angels look down and say, is it God wise? Every single time that we unite our hearts together in song and in prayer and in worship to God, the angels look down and say, is it God wise? Every time the elders serve the way that they should and the preachers preach the way that they should and the church works together in unity the way that we should, the angels say, isn't our God wise? When the kingdom of God is doing what the kingdom should be doing, the angels say, isn't God wise? The wisdom of God. How dare we think we can change the gospel? How dare we think that we can, we can uh, stop preaching the truth of the gospel. One fellow said here in Texas that baptism has become a barrier to salvation. Are you kidding me? That's the wisdom of God. Look, why would we choose the wisdom of man over the wisdom of God? My friends, the wisdom of God is always better than the wisdom of man. Always. The wisdom of man can fail. The wisdom of God will not. The wisdom of man is flawed. The wisdom of God is not. We should never, ever, ever choose the wisdom of God, a man over the wisdom of God. May God help us always choose his wisdom. And when we proclaim the message of the gospel, and when sinners are one, 
and when prodigals come home and when the church is united, when we're worshiping and serving and reaching out to our community and doing what we should, the angels look down and say, isn't God wise? And Paul closes this section in verse 12, or by verse 11 by saying, this was in accordance with the eternal purpose which he carried out in Christ Jesus our Lord. I love the way Paul closes this section by saying that this isn't just the unfathomable riches of Christ. It's not just the wisdom of God, but it's something that was a part of God's plan from before the creation of the world. This is not a new plan. This is not a Johnny come lately. This is the wisdom of God. And it was God's plan long before the world was ever created. Some people think that God had a plan for the Jews and to save the world and it didn't work out. So he had to come up with another plan. No, this was God's plan before the world was created, before any man was created in the world or any child was born. This was God's plan. And it's this plan that we proclaim. And every time we do, the angels look down and say, isn't our God wise? Don't ever forget, my friends, the wisdom of God is always better than the wisdom of man. Don't we serve an awesome, powerful, wonderful God? May he help us. May we be committed as the church, as proclaimers of the gospel, as those who have the gospel that has been, uh, been given to us. May we be those who have been entrusted to us. May we be those who proclaim the message of the gospel. Everywhere we go, to everyone that we know, there are people who are watching this broadcast tonight who can influence somebody else with the gospel in ways that no preacher can ever do, in ways that no elders can ever do. There are people that you work with and people that live in your community and people that work in the restaurant where you eat. There are people in your life who you can proclaim the wisdom of God to that no religious leader, no preacher, no elder can, can do. So we all have a part to play. We are the recipients of the grace of God, the wisdom of God, and we proclaim that message. And when we do, the angels look down and they say, is it God wise? My prayer is that these thoughts will be helpful to you, that you'll be encouraged. If you have questions, if I can help you in any way, please feel free to reach out to me. Um, my email address is jeffajenkins at gmail.com. You could post a message to me on Facebook or send me a private message. I'd love to hear from you if you have something that you need help with. Uh, our goal is to help preachers particularly, but we want to help all Christians. Thank you for joining us tonight. Let's have a prayer and then we'll turn it back over to Tony. Father, thank you so much for your uh, marvelous wisdom. Thank you, Father, for the mystery that was revealed through your holy apostles and prophets. Help us, Father, to realize that we too are recipients of that mystery and the wisdom of God. Father, help us to proclaim your wisdom to the world everywhere we go, to everyone we meet. Help us never stop proclaiming your mystery, your wisdom to others the unfathomable riches of Christ. Thank you, Father, for letting us play a small part in your plan. May we never forget that we are co-workers with you. We're co-workers with our Savior. Father, help us to love you more. Father, we pray tonight for those who are hurting, those who have been mentioned uh, tonight. We pray, Father, you'll help us to continually pray for each other. And Father, help us to rejoice with the angels in heaven every time we do your will. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, brother, I reckon you uh, you came to preach tonight. Well, thank you, Tony. It's a pleasure to be with you, brother. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, I, I, there's several thoughts running through my head. For one, you know, I, I think about the unfathomable riches that you hit on so much. You know, the Bible is so unfathomable. It's beyond finding out by human wisdom. And think about being a preacher. You know, b being a preacher in a religious organization that is based on the commandments and precepts of man has got to be very difficult because the material is just not good. We have much better material, just the Bible, the, the yeah. unfathomable riches. And you know, Tony, another thing about that, and you're exactly right, by the way, but another thing about that is, notice how often that message that is manufactured by man, by different men, by groups or by churches, how often that message is going to change. It'll, oh, often, it'll often change with the times or with the, the culture. 
but the word of God is never changing. It is always the same for every culture, for every generation, for every race, for every nationality. There, there's no difference. It's all the same. Yes. And, uh, you know, I also thought about it's so unfathomable, unfathomable, but it's also so immense. I, I, I don't know who said it, but it's like trying to drain everything, get everything out of the word. It's like going to the ocean with a thimble. And yes, if we were having a lecture and we took 10 gospel preachers and assigned them this topic, the wisdom of God, I believe in my heart, you would get 10 different sermons, all talking about God's wisdom from a different perspective, pointing people to the church of Christ that Jesus built when he said upon, that he talked about when he said upon the truck, I'll build my church. I, I think we would too, Tony. By the way, that's a great idea. We need to put lectureship together on the wisdom of God, don't we? It, wouldn't it be amazing? <laughs> yeah. you know, in fact, that would be a neat little challenge for the the, the lecturers. It's like, hey, you, you know, you're, you, here's your topic. Really? Well, what are the other topics? No, that, that that's it. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be great. Yes, sir. Very interesting. Well, brother, yeah. um, just to satisfy your curiosity, uh, if, if I were going to follow you and preach a sermon, I would preach it uh, from 1 Corinthians chapter 1. And I, I thought about this, but we preach Christ crucif crucified under the Jews a stumbling block and under the Greeks foolishness, but unto them which are called both Jews and Greeks, Greeks, the power of God and the wisdom of God, because the foolishness of God is wiser than men and the weakness of God is stronger than men. And I could talk about an entirely different facet of the multifaceted wisdom than what you did. It's just, I'm, I'm blown away. Thank you so much. I'm don't, don't, I don't want to keep it too long. Uh, we're going to, we're, we're going to let you get out of here, uh, brother Jeff. And I, I saw, I think more than one comment that said they hope we, uh, they hope that, uh, Jonathan and Eric have you back and soon. So thank you, Tony. It's been a pleasure to be with you, brother. Thank you for your work. Yes, sir. God bless you. And thank you. And I'm going to, I'm going to remove you from the screen and you, you can, you can log out at your leisure. And, and I'll, I'll talk about the prayer request. God bless you, Brother Jeff. Thank you so much. Take care. All right. Wasn't that a blessing? Um, I, really, I really wanted to keep him on and talk to him a bunch longer, but I didn't want to bother him. Uh, it, preaching excites me, and uh, I don't know. I just like it. Anyway, I like it, and I, I really like it when it's done well. And uh, in case you was wondering, that was done well. I got a few folks here uh, on the prayer request tonight, um, and if I missed anybody, please don't um, please don't take offense to that. Uh, number one, Facebook and YouTube pro don't always play fair. Number two, uh, I just ain't real good at this yet. So I, I was keeping an eye on the comment section. So here's what I've got. Corey Elizabeth asked for silent prayer, so she has an unspoken uh, prayer request. So we don't have to know what it is, but we're just going to mention her tonight when we pray. And there is a name, quite frankly, that I don't think I can pronounce correctly because I don't know about this C. I don't know if it's a C sound or a K sound, but it's Angela Caetano or Satiano. Anyway, um, Chris Manuel passed away. And I could not ascertain from her post if that was a blood relative or a relative in Christ, but it was someone very important to her and her heart is breaking. So we're going to pray for her and the family of Chris Manuel. And uh, let's pray for Julie Jenkins as well. And I guess I better put Jonathan. Make sure to mention him. And uh, somebody also mentioned Eric uh, as he's traveling taking care of some stuff. And then uh, Trish, uh, Trish Ricks has another niece that's going to be induced. She's going to have labor induced. Uh, according to the message, it wasn't her first child, and uh, they don't expect any problems, but, you know, you never, never know. Any, you just, it's always better to ask for God's prayer uh, before you really, really need them. And uh, Scott Beck, I'm glad you did that. Jeff's website is very good, and he put that on there, www the Jenkins Institute.com and they do a lot of stuff and it's really good quality stuff. Um, all right. I didn't see anybody update me on any more prayer requests. So why don't we do that? And, uh, let's go to God in prayer. 
Almighty God and Heavenly Father, we are bowed down before thy throne of grace and mercy. We praise and magnify your wonderful name for thy loving kindness and thy multifaceted, unfathomable wisdom. Father, at this time, we offer up uh, supplications, especially on behalf of these that are mentioned. We want you to help Corey Elizabeth in whatever way she needs help and surround her with people who are able to be a good influence and to help her in whatever way she needs. Father, we know that all things are possible through you. And fa Father, with uh, the passing of Chris Manuel, evidently he was very loved and he's going to be missed and there are people who are grieving. Uh, Angela put that prayer request in. Father, be with her and be with the family of Chris Manuel. And uh, we would pray, Father, that all would come to know the comfort and solace that comes from a right relationship in thee father be with julie jenkins and jonathan jenkins as uh they're still kind of out of pocket julie's having that procedure and uh just pray for them strengthen them and give them safe travels and we'll also um, pray for eric owens and whomever is traveling with him and, and pray for their family during this transition and we pray that uh as much as I enjoy this, Father, uh, we need Jonathan and Eric back to be doing this. Uh, and I think I think that's that's best for all, and, and your will is going to work out. Father um, Trish Ricks, uh, we're praying for her niece. Uh, be with her niece as, as her niece is induced. Uh, pray for the little baby that's coming. Pray that all will be well, and pray for the health of the mother. And, um, Father, pray. We, 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 we want you to help and bless the work of digital Bible study. Uh, help us with the locals page. Bless us with growth on the locals page. Uh, bless us with uh, people who would like to be a part of digital Bible study to produce programming and do work here. Father, we want to grow, grow, grow to where we can influence many, many people. We want to show people that multifaceted wisdom, and we want to bring people to Christ. Father, we love you. and. Uh, it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. So let me get something really quick. I think if I go to YouTube, I can see if anybody did any super chats. I don't think they did, but I could be wrong. So I'm going to go to the... Oh, I turn my music, my, my sound down. All right, so I don't see any uh, super chats on YouTube, and if you and if you did a super chat on YouTube and I don't acknowledge it, please don't take offense. I, I don't, I don't, I just can't see it. But here is uh, we do. I can check the stars. So, uh, and I don't mean astrology. I'm talking about on Facebook. You can send a comment with stars. So all the comments six sent with stars. Now I don't have a bell, so I'm going to ring an imaginary bell and make the sound with my mouth. Are you ready? Claudette Penn sent 200 stars. Ding, 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 ding. Now this part's important. Valetta Ram, 100 stars. Ding, 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 ding. And Patsy Alderman, 50 stars. Ding, 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 ding. And Sobrono with 50 stars ding 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 so i know that i am no substitute for eric and his bell but listen those of you that sent stars and super chats and stuff and those of you who support us monetarily and those of you who uh support us by being here day in day out and sharing the content and interacting with the content we just want to uh, uh, say thank you and we appreciate you so much don't forget to share this don't forget to say your prayers and include digital Bible study in them. And um, that's about all I got here, folks. I guess I need to say the thing, don't I? Listen, it is our prayer at digital Bible study that you will go out and make your day a great one for God. God bless y'all.